Hello and welcome to this live physio session. My name is Charlotte and I'm one of the physiotherapists and Pilates instructors here at Kate Bell's Physiotherapy and we're ready to help you from our clinic on Ecclesall Road South. We are excited to be hosting a regular live physio video each week. We hear so often that people can't make it to the physio, they can't get the time off the work, they've just got such busy hectic lives and because of that our health suffers. So we've decided to bring physio to you. And during this session, it's a great opportunity for you to ask any questions that you can think of, whether it's you've got existing injuries, you just want a little bit of advice on something, you're training for something like the half marathon and you're getting a bit of niggles here and there, um, what's the best way to sit, literally anything, um, and we'll do our best to answer it. Um, and we'll give our, as much help as possible, and we'll also be sharing some great tips, advice and exercises as we go. Remember that all the advice we give on here is based on the questions that you ask and no prior assessment has been taken. Um, if we recommend further action is required and we feel that on here isn't the place or the platform to discuss, then you can always come into the clinic and we can sort of do a bit of a more thorough assessment and maybe offer you a bit more help. Okay, so let's get started. So I've got a few messages here. Um, the first one is from John. So John asks, I have been training for the Sheffield Half Marathon and over the last three weeks I've been getting a little bit of knee pain um, that's progressively been getting worse. It only really hurts when running downhill and obviously in Sheffield there's a lot of hills. I haven't really done a huge deal of running before but I have followed a training programme to get me where I am. What do you think could be causing my knee pain and how can I fix it? So John, I mean, obviously there's a few things we need to look at here. So the first thing, have you ever had any previous knee injury before? Um, or have you had a, pre a knee injury during your training? Have you sort of twisted the knee or have you done anything where you suddenly thought, oh, ow, that's a little bit sore? If so, um, there could be something going on in the joint. Maybe it's a bit of cartilage irritation if it has been a twisted injury, for instance. Um, but if you have had an injury and you haven't any swelling and you've got any concerns from that point of view, it might be worth popping in just so we can do a bit more of a thorough assessment just to clear anything more sort of sinister going on. But other than that, if you haven't had any injuries and we'll go along with the fact that you haven't seen, you haven't really mentioned any, um, there are a few things that it could be. Again, without doing a thorough assessment, we wouldn't be able to say for sure what we think it is, but just sort of based off past experiences and the sort of things people come in here with, I'll be able to give you a little bit of advice based on that. So, John, really, quite often when people go into running and sort of training for half marathons, it's quite common for people to get niggles, aches and pains, particularly if you haven't really done any running before. This is purely because our muscles don't have the strength or the endurance required initially for running a half marathon. Because if you can imagine you've been doing tennis or uh, football or something like that and then all of a sudden you're thinking, right, I need to keep my muscles strong and active for two hours, then they're just not going to have the strength to do that. So we really need to focus your training on getting those muscles up to that strength and up to that endurance to be able to withstand the strains that you need for a half marathon. So for instance, if you were running and your muscles are starting to get, to get tired a mile in, you're going to start overloading the other joints a little bit more because your muscles haven't got the strength to take the pressure needed for the run. So if we've got a, I've just got a knee joint here to show you. Um, so for instance, really common injury for runners or niggle, I'll say, um, for runners is what we call PFJ pain, so patellofemoral joint pain. So this is your patellofemoral joint, um, it's where your patella sits in your femur, so this bone here, um, and your patella sits just resting in some little grooves on your femur, but it's a floating bone. So what holds that bone in place is your quadriceps, so the big thigh muscles on the front, um, which then attach to a tendon onto your bone there. So it is literally a joint held in place by muscles and tendons. So if you can imagine um, you're on a run and your quadricep muscle is really, really, really fatiguing and isn't able to support this joint like it should do, you're gonna get find you're gonna get a lot of um, sort of impact really going through the joint itself rather than the muscle. So if you can imagine you're getting a lot of impact going through this kneecap rather than the muscle, you're gonna get a lot of irritation on there. As well, if a muscle's a little bit weak and fatiguing, naturally they're a little bit tighter. So if this muscle's tight, you can imagine it's gonna be pulling this kneecap into that groove a little bit more. So if you're running with a tight muscle, pulling this kneecap into the groove and haven't got the strength and control for that kneecap to sit nicely in the groove, that surface of that kneecap is just gonna get really aggravated, really inflamed, and it's gonna be causing you a lot of problems. 
The reason why people find it most painful running down a hill is because when you run down a hill, all the weight's translated through the front of your knee. So again, if you're running down a hill and your muscles haven't got that strength to control that knee bend and control that joint itself, all the force is going through that knee and it's just gonna be really, really sore and aggravated in there, okay? So that is, like I say, one of the main things we see with runners is patella femoral joint pain. Um, just because people haven't got the strength, haven't got the endurance within that quadricep to do the job it needs to do. So how can you, how can you change that? So looking at what we call the eccentric quad control is sort of the muscle's ability to lengthen while contracting is a really good indication as to what muscle power you've got. So doing something as simple as a single leg knee bend, so sort of a single leg knee bend on the affected knee, bending that knee and coming back up. So looking at that control you have there, if you find your knees dropping in a little bit, dropping out a little bit, shaking all over a little bit, then the chances are it's probably doing the same when you're running. So if you're finding you haven't got that control around your knee just doing a single leg knee bend, then you probably haven't got that control around the knee running. So doing that as an exercise in itself is a really good way to try and build up some of that eccentric control around that knee. So I'd probably do that exercise until it burns really. So to really work a muscle, you need to feel a burn. There's no point in doing three sets of 10 if you're not feeling it. You need to do, I don't know, three sets of 20 if you're really feeling that burn after 20. And then that'll just build on that strength, build on that endurance a little bit more. Other things that could be causing that knee pain, um, do you have good stability around your hip? A lot of people don't actually, partly because of how they stand, how they move, and they overcompensate using other muscles. And as a result of that, our glutes tend to become really quite weak. If you've got weakness around your glutes, it impacts the whole leg. So if you've got weakness here, knees tend to drop in a little bit. So again, if you're running and your knee's dropping in, you're gonna put a lot of force through different areas of that knee. You're gonna increase a lot of tension down the side of your leg and increase the tension around the front. And again, just changing where that force is going through the knee can change where the impact's going through that kneecap, okay? So again, if you're weak around that hip, you're gonna have a knock-on effect. A really other common thing for knee pain is tight IT bands. I'm sure you've probably heard of IT bands. They are the muscles that run down the side here. So again, if they're getting really tight, they can refer pain into your knee. And a really good way to see if they are tight is sort of go about a hand's width above your knee and have a press into there. And that tends to be quite tender on people with tight IT bands. If it is, have a bit of a press, have a hold in there until it eases off, and you might find that that in itself helps ease up knee pain a little bit more. If you do feel um, that you maybe haven't got great hip control, haven't got like the strongest glutes in the world, that's fine but it's really important to try and strengthen them, particularly with running. Because like I say, if you're struggling just to do a single leg knee squat and your knee's dropping in, then you're gonna find that it's doing the same when you're running, okay? So ways that you can strengthen your glutes are things like squats, just making sure your pelvis is in the right position so you're actually engaging the right muscles, um, crab walks, clams, anything like that. Really good to build quad strength and glute strength. So yeah, I'd, ha I'd have a little bit of a play around, have a little bit of your look at your single leg knee squat, see what control you've got around that knee, see what control you've got around that hip, and sort of take it from there. If you're just thinking, wow, <laughs> that's a lot to take on board, feel free to come and see us um, here at the clinic and we can do a bit more of a thorough assessment and sort of find areas where you have got weakness. Okay. If you're thinking, can I carry on running? Um, answers, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all about graded loading. So if you are getting a little bit of pain when you're running, that's absolutely fine. It's just how significant is that pain? If you feel you're running and like, oh, it's a bit of a niggle, it's fine, then that's fine. Okay, if you're thinking, God, it's getting a, it's getting a bit, bit sore now, above a four out of 10 kind of pain, then that's maybe when you need to start thinking, right, I need to rein down my running and I need to sort of address the problem a little bit more. Again, have a look, is there any swelling there? If there is swelling, how long is it swelling for after your run? This again can be a bit of an indication as to what's going on around that knee. If it's swelling for longer than 30 minutes, again, I've probably saved done a little bit too much on that knee. Um, finally, stretch out, okay? So regardless whether it's instability around the hip, instability around the knee, the quads, 
foam roll stretch because like I said, coming back to this knee joint, if these muscles here are tight, they're pulling that kneecap into this joint and really irritating um, that, that kneecap, okay? So foam roll out your quads, foam roll out your IT bands, simple stretches such as your classic quad stretch, so just bringing that foot behind, okay? Making sure those knees are in line, those hips are forward and you're up and tall, um, just to get that nice stretch through those quads. And with any stretch, I'll hold sort of up to 20 seconds really. And I'll do them sort of little and often, whenever you get a chance, and definitely before and after your run. Okay? So I hope that helped, John. Um, we've probably just got time for one more question, okay? So next, Katie asks, I've recently been starting going to the gym and to lose a bit of weight. I haven't been going to the gym for about 20 years, and I've only really just begun a few classes back at the gym. Um, last week, I was picking up a two kilogram weight and I felt my back go. Um, I spoke to my family and friends and they've told me to rest and not do very much. What should I do? Um, so Kate, first of all, I'd like to ask, are you having any neurological symptoms? So by this I mean, are you getting any pins and needles? Are you getting any numbness? Are you getting any changes with your bladder and bowel? Um, if you find that you are, I'd definitely book in to see a physio or your GP just to sort of clear any more sinister things that might be going on. If you're not getting any sort of pins and needles or tingling or anything like that and you're just getting that ache across your lower back, then I'd, I'd probably say it could be, could be very much muscular. Again, really hard to say without assessing you because there's so much things that can happen with your back and um, it is hard to say without seeing you. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of go through a few options that it could be. So, with your back, um, I'll find a spine. Bear with me. Okay, so this here is a spine, all right? With ladies, it's very common for us to stand like this. So, knees locked out, pelvis really tilted up, and shoulders really back, okay? So knees locking out, hanging on those joints, pelvis really tilted upwards, again, hanging on those joints, um, and it's just not engaging your muscles standing like that. So the problem with sort of hanging back on your lower back there, it causes all these muscles down the side to become really tight and overworked. It causes your glutes to switch off and it, it uh, causes your thighs to switch off, okay? So first things first, have a bit of a look at how you're standing. Are you standing like that? If so, we need to address that, okay? So simple things like unlock your knee, tuck that pelvis under, um, and try and switch off these muscles a little bit is a really good place to start. Um, but from a sort of management point of view, don't stop, don't rest and lie down flat for weeks on end because that, that's not gonna do you any good. Our spine is built like this because it, it needs to move. If, if we were designed to stay still and rest and not do anything, it'd be one solid structure, um, but, it, but it's not. <laughs> so what I would do is some really gentle range of movement exercises, so sort of knee rolls, so lying on your back, knees together, just gently rolling them from side to side some gentle knee hugs just to get that lower back stretched out a little bit. Um, and then from that, I'd probably look into doing some gentle um, soft tissue work yourself. So even grabbing a um, tennis ball or a spiky ball, having a lie on your back and just popping it in between these muscles, either side of your spine. So you'll probably feel a little bit of a tense patch either side of that spine. And that's the muscle that tends to get go into a little bit of spasm with acute episodes of back pain. So pop your tennis ball into that lower back, have a lie on it, roll it up and down the side of that spine just to try and start loosening off that muscle a little bit. Okay, and you might find that that just gives you a little bit of relief to get going on with your normal things. But like I say, keep moving, gentle, gentle things. Don't sort of go overboard and carry on with all your housework. Your back does need time to rest and settle down but it's just really important to keep it moving. Okay, I hope that helped. I know, sorry, I could have gone into a lot more detail with that, but sort of just running out a little bit of time. So hopefully that's helped. If not, feel free to give us an email or pop in and see us, and we can um, sort of give you a bit more help on that. Okay, so that's the end of today's Facebook Live. Um, thank you all to those who joined me and posted questions. We will be back again next week for another live session. So please come back and we can hopefully answer any questions that we didn't answer today and you can ask any questions that you didn't get a chance to ask today. Um, 
And if you can't wait until then, do drop us a me email at hello at katebellphysio.com and then one of the team will be there to help and sort of give you, give you a little bit of response in regards to that question. All right, I hope that was helpful and we'll see you all next week. Okay, thank you.